So we just went through Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian was a category four hurricane that made landfall in Southwest Florida. It impacted Fort Myers and Lee County quite severely and also Southern Sarasota County. There are other counties it affected as well, but I'm gonna focus on our region um, and tell you a little bit about what happened and what transpired. Today we're going to talk about hurricanes and how it affects our real estate market. My name is Michelle Tanner and for more videos like this, please like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more exciting videos. So this hurricane was meant to make landfall in Tampa Bay and it ended up about two hours south of Tampa Bay in southwest Florida making landfall around Sanibel, Fort Myers and all those areas in, in Lee County. I'm located in Sarasota, which is between Tampa and Fort Myers. We're about an hour and a half to Fort Myers, and we're only about 45 minutes to Northport, which was another area that was severely affected. This made landfall as a category four. It was almost a category five, and we felt winds in our area of Sarasota in the outer bands of the hurricane um, up to 80 miles per hour, and some people are saying up to 100 miles per hour. We had very little damage in our area. Unfortunately, south of us in Northport and Fort Myers, those got severely hit, especially um, Fort Myers Beach area, Sanibel, Captiva, Pine Island, all of those areas. Horrible destruction, and it's in our everyday news, and, and it's what everybody's talking about. So not only is this affecting everybody's spirit throughout the country, but also especially in Florida, because everybody knows somebody that lives down there. Everybody knows somebody where their roof needs replaced and they might have lost their pool cage and they might have lost um, other things. But luckily everyone that we know is safe and still alive and we're... One thing that's gonna be quite catastrophic is not only besides the loss of life, but is the loss of places where people are living, their residences. Whether they're renting or they're owning, there's gonna be thousands and thousands of people without a place to live. And because I am in real estate, that is weighing on my heart and my mind heavily. So where do these people go? What are they gonna do after the hurricane? So I think, you know, some people will be with family and friends and also some of them are in hotels, but that can only last for a while. People have to rebuild, but that's gonna take a long time to happen because there's so much damage and there's still water. Um, surrounding some people's properties and there's also places where people cannot access because bridges were destroyed. So that is something to consider. So to think about the destruction of property and all the destruction of real estate is the main effect of what happened. People have flooding in their houses. People are going to have to do the water extraction and the mold mitigation as quickly as possible because if the water does not get removed quickly and dried out, we know that mold will set in. Also, if these properties have the water extraction but they don't have power and their air conditioning isn't fully running, it might not be fully dry and again, mold can set in and we know how horrible mold can be. That affects the respiratory system, it affects all sorts of things and it's a huge concern. So there's gonna be thousands of people without a place to live. What do I think that will do for our real estate market? Well, usually we do see a surge after a hurricane in a real estate market. And 
not in the direct area where it's affected. So I do believe that Fort Myers and maybe Northport that those places will take a dip in their real estate market and there'll be a holding pattern where people really are not selling and not buying in those areas just because they can't get to the properties, they can't do those transactions. But in the surrounding areas, I think we'll have a surge. So again, we're about an hour and a half north of Fort Myers and about 45 minutes north of Northport. And I do think, you know, that we will have a surge in our real estate market. There's going to be investors that buy more properties because they're going to have rentals in the area for people that need a place to live. Um, and there's going to be people that are the down there that decide to move up a little bit north. Um, it might start as early as, um, you know, Punta Gorda, Venice, and then up to Sarasota. It might even go all the way up to Tampa and St. Pete and Clearwater because those people, there's so many people that they'll have to go elsewhere. And the other option is they could go to East Florida, they could even move out of state, but they're going to have to find affordable housing and they're going to have to find it pretty quickly. A couple days after there was a lot of people at the, the gas stations closer to I-75, but um, again, our area was not nearly as affected as it was down south. What we did have in Sarasota was a lot of tree limbs down, a lot of trees down. Um, driving around the day after the hurricane, I really was so surprised at how many trees were actually falling in the street and not on people's houses. A lot of large branches down, some pool cage screens damaged. I did have one friend where a tree fell on her house, so she'll have a new have to get a new roof, but nobody had their roofs blow off that I know of or shingles off and down south, downtown Sarasota seems pretty much unscathed. Um, but you know, a week after there's still people without power and that is a concern. People will have um, a quicker recovery here where we didn't weren't as damaged, but you know, the thousands of people that were are without power and without a, a home, um, that's gonna be a challenge. We had one of our great friends come into our office on Monday following the hurricane because she lives down in Fort Myers and she had no power and therefore no internet. And she came up to use our internet and to help all of her clients make claims on their property. And we did hear some, some crazy stories about what's going on down there. So this is as close as me and my family have ever come to a hurricane. Our last hurricane experience was with Hurricane uh, Irma and we drove up to North Carolina to be with our cousins and we were out of harm's way and we decided to stay put for this hurricane. But why it does take so much time for power to get up and running is, for example, we had a huge tree fall on a power line on our street. So it's not like the power people can just come in and put a new line up. They actually have to get a tree removal, removal service. First, somebody comes out and surveys the area. Then they get a tree removal service who is under their employment to come out and remove that tree. They actually had to get a crane down our street yesterday to remove this huge tree that was on a power line and then clear all the debris and then they're able to work on the line. So it's not a quick process, but with thousands and thousands and actually we had 3 million people without power, it takes some time to get all of that up and running. Um, what is interesting is the small city that is over by Robarts Arena off of Fruitville. This is the place that is the holding place or the base for all the linemen in our area, especially in Sarasota County, but also further south. Um, there is about 1,500 people there. They're being fed three meals a day. They also have these pods that are on wheels that are bunk beds for about 16 people and porta potties are their only restroom facilities. They do have other pods that serve as showers for them. Um, a huge catering company that's a disaster relief uh, specific company comes in and they set up, there's a mobile kitchen out back. Um, we've been delivering donuts to them for three days so far. They were donated by a donut shop and we're just being the, the transport for those donuts. So we've been behind the scenes and we're able to see how they have their outdoor grills set up. There's an outdoor air conditioned area. Um, they have such massive pots that they make things in that they are cleaning those pots with a the pressure washer. Um, but they do have a kitchen on wheels. That's a mobile kitchen where they're doing all the dishes. 
um, but they're grilling out massive amounts of food. They have the, the steamers, the outdoor steamers and uh, smokers and all of that set up in the back. There's also about eight uh, buses that are made to transport all the linemen. And why, I asked, why are these buses out here? They're the nice, you know, coaches that travel around is that's to transport the workers back to another area for sleeping quarters at night because the spot at Robarts only houses about a thousand and they have um, at least 1500 linemen there. So these guys are getting three hot meals a day. They are kind of set up as to go um, so they can just grab and go. And it's not like somebody's back there chopping lettuce and all of all anything. The stuff is, all their food has already come in chopped up. Um, things like that. We're just seeing some of the behind the scenes where it's not like a kitchen where you would go dine at where it's, they're just getting it, they get it so they can make quick meals because they have to make so many meals and so quickly. So really interesting behind there, their master command center and how they have it organized. But there are literally linemen from all over the country. We've met a really nice group from, from Tennessee. There's some from Virginia, Georgia, pretty much every state you can imagine, they're here helping out the Florida residents after the hurricane. So that is really interesting and really heartwarming just to see how people come together. But it was really nice to see friends and family come together, all the neighbors really coming together. Um, we've been grilling out, neighbors coming over for dinner and swimming in our pool um, because of, of course, schools are still shut down. So in Sarasota County, we heard that they were gonna be shut down for two weeks, but, um, it's two weeks in total because we were, we had Monday of last week before the hurricane hit. The hurricane hit on a Wednesday and we had school on Monday. And then they were having the schools serve as shelters, often public schools serve as shelters in any community because they're a large building and they are concrete block and they have the facilities to do so. Um, and all the mobile home parks always get evacuated because mobile homes are not tied to the ground properly so they um, are not safe and then the barrier islands are often evacuated because if you think of a hurricane it's going to come in from the gulf or come in from the ocean and the barrier islands are never the safest place to be because they're all waterfront property so those are usually evacuated as well so some people choose to evacuate when an evacuation order order is made and some people choose to stay in place Sometimes it is so surprising how people stay tied to their homes after a tragedy because it is their home and they don't want to leave it and they don't want to be told they have to leave. Even with flood waters, um, they have their pets there, they have their belongings. They don't want to have to leave because they don't know when they're going to come back and be able to rescue any of their belongings. And usually when they are, are rescued from their homes, they're only be able to carry what is what they're wearing. It's not like they're grabbing suitcases and, and able to take their personal belongings. So for some people evacuating even after a hurricane or any type of natural disaster is challenging for many people. Um, another thing that happened during the hurricane is uh, we get alerts on our phone, of course, about evacuating different zones. So everybody in Florida is in a specific zone for evacuation. Of course, the properties closest to the water are in zone A, and those people are ordered to evacuate sooner than the next zone. And to think about, you know, as you're buying a house, if you wanna make sure you're not too close to the water, not only to say, okay, I'm not in a flood zone. So that's one thing is check your flood zone, ask your agent that you're working with, what flood zone is this in? If it's in a V, that's a velocity. So that's the highest flood zone you can be in. Those are those waterfront properties, waterfront condos. Um, but an X is actually still a flood zone, but it's not required that you carry flood insurance if you have a loan on your property, if that makes sense. So one of the other aftermaths of a hurricane for the people that are in the direct line of the, the hardest hit areas is there will be people will see defaults in people's loans. Um, they'll miss payments, of course, and hopefully the people that are in those areas are canceling their utilities. So there's nothing on their credit that shows they didn't pay their utilities. They can actually call and say, I need to turn off my utilities, especially if they know they're not going back to their house anytime soon. Um, 
but people will default on their mortgage payments if their house is in complete ruin and they're gone. They will not be communicating usually with the bank and be able to make those mortgage payments. Um, one thing surrounding a hurricane as far as jobs go is there will be a huge surge and a huge need for anybody in the construction type industry. So people that are even in the affected area or surrounding or people that are out of state that want to go where these disasters are, there's always plenty of construction jobs, um, rebuilding infrastructure. Um, people that are really busy right now are the roofers, the plumbers, the water mitigation, mold mitigation companies, um, anything like that. So keep in mind that that is also an issue. I also know, have a friend who has somebody that owns a large boat and they were just um, subcontracted to help on a daily basis, 12 hour shifts every day with their boat, um, getting things or people to and from Sanibel. So that's, you know, another type of job, if you can think of what helps the disaster area that is on the water after uh, a hurricane. So it's really interesting, you know, before a hurricane, what happens, even if it doesn't hit us, everybody, we know it's coming to Southwest Florida or it's coming to the West coast of Florida. So what happens is everybody rushes out and buys water. Sometimes people buy way too much water than they would ever drink in a month. <laughs> and some people, you know, buy just the right amount, but um, water, um, toilet paper sometimes, uh, canned goods. If you think of all those items that can be cooked without being refrigerated. So canned goods, um, snack items, all of those things usually clear the shelves before a hurricane. So that's another thing to think of both before the hurricane and after about availability of things. I know for the people down in the areas severely affected, they're having problems getting just regular groceries because the grocery stores don't open. The grocery stores don't have power, so they can't open. They can't serve the public. People can't get the items they need. But that's why everybody in the surrounding areas is starting their um, donation drives, or they have been started since the day after the hurricane, um, where they're collecting items in need. You know, they're collecting anything from diapers to formula to, um, Toiletries is a big thing that they're collecting, bottled water. Some are still collecting generators and tarps and gasoline. But you think of everybody who is still severely affected where they don't have power, they don't have clean drinking water. Um, a lot of those affected areas still have to boil all their water, um, even if it's to give to their pets because the water is unsafe to drink because it may have been contaminated with bacteria or raw sewage and they just cannot take a chance consuming any of that. Um, people in the area that are in their house still without power or water, they might not have even been showering, been able to shower for the past week um, because they're not going to, to take a shower in potentially bacteria or polluted, polluted water. So it's just things that we take for granted every day that really make us all stop and take a pause about how this can affect us even though our area was not, um, I mean, we are really pretty much unscathed as far as the power coming back on. That's pretty much the only blip on the radar we have right now. And, you know, of course there are people that will have to replace their roofs and have more severe damage, but Sarasota as a whole, we're in the outer bands of the hurricane. The eye did not come close. Um, and, you know, they say anything over a category three really has severe effects to not only the economy, but the housing market. And since this was a category four, almost a category five, I imagine that our real estate market will have a little bit of a, a surge and a little bit of a demand because all of those people are going to need to move and find housing in other locations. And they're going to be want to be in locations where they're not rebuilding where they don't have work trucks, where they don't still have standing water in places without power. Because any of those homes that have standing water in their properties, they cannot turn the power on safely for any of those residents. So it's a big thing to consider um, of the devastation that happens after a hurricane. And I think having it hit so close to home 
has really affected a lot of us to think, how can we help? Um, we think of the realtors down there that how will they have a living if they can't sell property? Um, and not just, of course, real estate agents. There's a lot of industries, the food service industry, if, if things are unable to open, where will they go? Um, they're gonna have to move away. And it might be a temporary move where it's three months or six months or 12 months, but for these areas that are severely affected, it's gonna be a struggle for everybody to get back to work in a normal work environment. So just please keep Southwest Florida uh, in your thoughts and prayers, and we hope you are safe wherever you are, and just hope that this finds you well, and hopefully it was a little educational on what can happen in a hurricane. Um, of course, our real estate market will be affected, and I think it'll affect our local real estate market in a positive way, but we still only have about a three month inventory. It is still a shortage. And I anticipate that, that those homes will be gobbled, gobbled up pretty quickly. But another thing is people that have moved here anywhere between the past year to the past five years may reconsider and say, hey, I don't wanna live in Florida anymore because these hurricanes are scary. Uh, I come from Ohio and if we had a tornado scare, you would go in the basement for maybe 30 minutes and it would pass. But it wasn't like a hurricane that it has such a wide band of devastation. And I think there will be people that decide they don't wanna live here anymore and they'll decide to sell their house as well. If you have any real estate needs or any further questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. My name is Michelle Tanner, and I would love to take your call at any time. And I hope you are safe wherever you are. And just know that hurricanes can have devastating effects to not just the local area that it hits, but the surrounding areas as well. Um, this has been really educational for me, but I, just hope that the areas can recover quicker than anticipated and hope that everybody stays positive and neighbors can continue helping neighbors. The community continues to pour in. They will rebuild in all of those areas and come back stronger, but old Florida of Fort Myers beach and all of that, you know, we keep you in our thoughts. We hope you are all, all are well. And um, if you need anything, don't hesitate to give us a call. We can find resources to help you and we will continue to help our neighbors here in Sarasota and in further areas around us. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you wanna get a hold of me, please give me a call, send me a text or an email and I'm happy to reach out to you to assist you with all your real estate dreams.